Good evening, friends. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Got some nice jazz for us to listen to tonight for a couple of minutes while folks sign in on our Facebook Live broadcast. Welcome to the Daily Update. Here are your bad dad jokes for the day. I have a friend who works in IT, and I ask him, how do you make a motherboard? And he said, well, I usually tell her about my job. Why don't ducks like going to restaurants? Because they always get the bill. I once caught my son chewing on an electrical cord. So I grounded him, at least until he could conduct himself properly. That's a shocking story, isn't it? But you got a charge out of it. News for today. Uh, somebody asked me today, Preacher, are we not ever going to have church again? Well, folks, we've been having church for the last six months. Um, I'm. There may be people who aren't tuning in to Facebook or I don't know what to say to that. The church is not closed. The building is closed. The church is alive and well. And so um, the word is that possibly we'll be able to open our facility up again after we move into phase three, which could come as, earlier, as early as September the 11th, which would put us possibly trying to get into the building at the end of September. Can't promise anything. All I can tell you is that that's a possibility. And that's what you need to tell folks. It's not safe out there yet. Uh, we're still a hot spot, and we do not, you don't ease up when things are still bad. You wait until they've gotten quite a bit better. It's just how it works. Um, if you go to the church, the upper room and daily bread are available for pickup. They are in boxes out on the front porch of the church. You can pick up your devotionals. These are the ones that start in September, so you're still using your August one, I hope. The church continues to have prayer shawls and afghans and blankets available for members to obtain as a gift to give to somebody to comfort them in a time of need. B. Nussbaum is in charge of this ministry, and she is able to give these out to people who contact her through the church website. Go to the church website, www.standrewsumc.org. St. Andrews spelled completely out, standrewsumc.org and click on the Members tab, follow the directions for getting a prayer shawl to give to somebody. And I want to thank uh, B. Nussbaum and Renata Shang and Elaine Jenkins for crocheting and knitting these prayer shawls. By the way, the password, if you go into the Members section, is, well, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not on Facebook Live because I don't know who's coming on. If you're interested, send me a, a message and I'll let you know what the password to the Facebook, to the website is. This might be of interest to you on this coming Friday. August the 14th, all day from 8 to 4 at First, United, First Baptist, First United, First Baptist Church of Garner. They are having free drive through COVID-19 testing. So if you would like to be tested for it, now I do not think this is antibody testing to see if you have had it. This is testing to see if you have the live virus in your body. Um, no appointment needed, no doctor's reference needed, no known symptoms needed. 
It's for anybody that wants to drive through and have a COVID-19 test. 8 to 4, Friday, First Baptist Church in Garner. Uh, testing will be on the parking lot on the south side of the church, come in from St. Mary's Street, but you'll see that when you get there. So that might be something that you're interested in. Our updates for today, continued prayers for the Woodward family. Um, the visitation for Dave will be from 10 to 12 on Saturday at Montlawn, and there will be a private memorial service for the family um, later that afternoon. So uh, if you'd like to come and visit, it's 10 to 12 at Montlawn on this coming Saturday. Also prayers for the family of Sean Johnson, Glenda Johnson's 22-year-old grandson who died suddenly. Family of Stella Denning, Stella being a former member of St. Andrew's Church. Stella passed away. We were praying for her for quite some time. The, and the new request, prayers for the family of Charles Prince, Brenda Eason's brother. He passed away. And a new one that was a shock to me yesterday, prayers for the family of Lynn Green. Lynn was 55. She was the Director of Education at Horn Memorial United Methodist in Clayton. Lynn was also a former member of my church in Clayton, Christ Community, and was on my church staff from 2005 to 2006. Lynn was a faithful Christian, a funny person, a very good writer, and she, had, she leaves behind a husband and two sons, a little bit older than my sons. Um, it's hard to imagine a world without Lynn, just as it's hard for me to imagine a world without Dave Woodward and Randy Creech and so many other good folks in our church and in our community that have passed away in the last five and a half years of my service here. Also, prayers for Eleanor Alexander, the 93-year-old mother of Betsy Youngblood, who dislocated her hip and had to have that fixed. And prayers for Deborah Rigsby, El, uh, Estes Rigsby's daughter, Deborah, is very sick and had to be admitted to Johnson Health and Clayton with pneumonia. Prayers for her and for Estes. And prayers for Loretta Grace Richardson and her mother, Amanda, and her father, John, as they continue to try to find out what is going on with that little girl so that they can get her well. There may be others that you are aware of, but certainly make me or the church office or Elaine Jenkins, who is our nurture coordinator, aware of those. And we will attend to those the very best we possibly can during a pandemic. The reflection for today is another one from this wonderful book called Healing Conversations. What to Say When You Don't Know What to Say by Nancy Gilmartin. And this is uh, helping us to be better Christians by helping us to have, be able to, to know what to say when we're with people who are suffering or need help. Because sometimes we simply don't know what to say or we say the wrong thing. This one is called, It'll Be Okay, Sugar Plum, Being a Light at the End of the Tunnel. And boy, right now, isn't this a time when we need to be a light at the end of the tunnel for people? I know so many people right now who are completely stressed out by the pandemic, by the civil, dis, uh, civil unrest in our country, by hurricanes, by earthquakes, you name it, the election coming up, um, so many things going on, uh, economic depression, and it is just weighing on people like a, it's like people in a pressure cooker. People that already were struggling have just reached the end of their rope. And so we can be a light at the end of the tunnel for people. Let me read what Nancy has to say today. Every Monday I could count on it being there. No matter where I was in the country, no matter what was going on in his family's life, it would be there, the voice, the message. It went something like this. Hey, just wanted you to know we're thinking of you wherever you are. We know things look pretty rough right now, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and we know you'll get through to the other side. We just know it. It'll be okay. Almost every week during one of the most confusing times in my life, I'd get this message on my voicemail. It came from my friend and business partner, Logan, and sometimes from his wife, Rhonda. It was a vigil they kept up for a whole year. Sometimes when they were going away on vacation, they'd call and leave a message before they left, just so I'd know they still cared. Logan told me that when Rhonda was a little girl growing up in New Orleans, her grandfather used to reassure her by saying, it'll be okay, sugar plum. What's the big deal, you might ask, about an innocuous phrase like, it'll be okay, sugar plum? Well, when you aren't sure whether or not you're going to go through with a divorce, you aren't sure whether you can make a living on your own because you feel so burned out, and you're beating yourself up in a, sense of, in a series of intense personal growth workshops on the meaning of life, when you move around the country from one consulting client to another living in hotels or dorms or clients' guest rooms, well, you can lose your compass. Those messages were like a compass that I would tune into each week and know in that moment, in that moment that I was loved. 
When friends are having a rough time, sometimes all they need is for you to check in. No advice, just sincere encouragement. Some perspective that maybe things will work out. You aren't telling them to see the glass as half full. You aren't telling them to think positive. Your message isn't just in the words. It's in the energy behind the words. When Logan and Rhonda left those messages, the energy behind their words was that they had faith in me. They didn't make me feel that just because I couldn't get my life completely together, I was falling apart. They didn't try to fix me either. Instead, they were giving me grace, permission to be in the messy place that I was in, while also acknowledging that I had very little faith in much of anything. They didn't try to talk me into or out of my feelings. They believed that somehow I would make it because they had faith in me and in the universe. Their messages came like clockwork. They were a small care package. And sometimes that's all we can offer. Sometimes it's enough. Be a light at the end of somebody's tunnel by letting them know that you care. Text them, email them, call them, stop by their house, send them a card. U.S. Postal Service still works, at least for a while. <laughs> I don't do as much of that as I should. I have so many people that I'm trying to take care of and I miss people and I'm sorry for those that needed to hear a word from me that didn't get it. Please, if you know somebody that needs, in particular, a word from their pastor, let me know and I will try to get with them. If, And you can certainly do it, even if I can't. Our prayer is next, so let's go to the Lord. Lord, we gather together today facing uncertainty and anxiety and fear as the world continues to struggle with a pandemic. We confess that this year has been one that we never prepared for, never expected, and don't know how to get through. We pray for those who are sick with COVID-19 or who have tested positive and are quarantined. We pray for the families and loved ones of those who have died and those who are sick. Heal those who are sick, Lord, and protect those who are vulnerable. Comfort those who are mourned. Bless those who are in quarantine and can't get out at all. Bless those who are waiting for test results. Be near to those who are lonely and give patience to those who wait. And we remember in particular the people of Brazil right now with over 100,000 dead. And the people in Texas and Florida and California especially and in North Carolina. We pray for the doctors and nurses and techs and paramedics and first responders and pharmacists and medical researchers and all those in the healthcare profession who are risking their lives and putting in extra hours and being apart from their families to try and make a difference during a time of pandemic. Protect them and their families. May they know an extra measure of your grace and may they know that they are appreciated. We pray for our government leaders at local, state, national, and world levels. Give them wisdom to act for the well-being of all people. Give them the courage to make difficult decisions. Empower them to be truthful to us and not to lie to us and to lead us with compassion. We pray for schools now, for from all the way from preschools and elementary schools and daycares to, to middle schools and high schools and colleges and universities. There are so many administrators who are having to make difficult decisions about whether to open school, how to open school, how to equip teachers to do online learning, how to get students to participate. It's an unprecedented situation that nobody really knows how to do well. So bless our administrators and our teachers and parents and our students during this time of transition in education. Give us all the grace and the patience to adapt to difficult circumstances. We pray now for those who seem to suffer the most from this illness and its economic fallout, the poor, people who are already living on the edge from paycheck to paycheck. Lord, we've, we've heard that millions of people are going to be evicted now because apparently landlords have reached the end of their patience in a pandemic. I don't know who they think is going to live in the places that they're kicking people out of, but we pray for those who are going to be homeless in the middle of a very, very difficult time. We pray for those with no access to health care or health insurance, for those with no paid sick leave, we pray for those who don't know what they're going to do with their kids when they go back to school. We pray for those who work for companies that have shut down and will never reopen. God, we pray for those people in places around the world that were already in bad trouble before the pandemic hit, starting in December. For places like Hong Kong, where freedoms are very slowly being choked out, where protesters are being attacked at random, beaten, killed, taken away, never to be seen again. We pray, Lord, that that kind of thing never happens in the United States. 
And we're afraid when we see protests in Chicago and Portland and we see military personnel and unmarked cars that we're going down that same road. And so we pray, God, for the people of Hong Kong. And we pray for our own country that freedom that has been established will not be wiped out, that it will be cherished and protected by everybody involved. Finally, we pray, God, for unnamed concerns, and there are many of them. I can think of people whose names I didn't mention, people whose names who pro people who probably didn't want me to say their names, who were facing surgeries and medical procedures, difficulties in their families, <sighs> health issues or other issues with their children or grandchildren. In your mercy, Lord, hear all of our prayers, spoken and unspoken. We ask that as we offer our concerns to you, as we do every day, that we would not be overcome and overwhelmed by fear and anxiety over this world we live in. We ask that every time we put on a mask or wash our hands, that we would open up our hearts as well to those who are in need. Help us to take care of each other in a hard time. And may we remember your promise from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Healer of every ill, light of every tomorrow, give us the peace beyond our fear. Give us hope beyond our sorrow. Amen. Good night, friends, and a better tomorrow to you all, to you all, and God bless.